You're listening to I Heard It on the 806, a podcast by John Bowers. After their initial outreach to Harlem, New York, God began to open new doors of reconciliation between Bethel Gospel Assembly and John's Church Christ Center in Oregon. When John was invited back to be the guest speaker at Bethel's annual missions conference, the Lord began an amazing new work. When the elders met and we took a group to Harlem, New York in the 1990s, little did I know what God was going to do in the area of reconciliation between the whites and the blacks. For I was always raised in a white atmosphere I didn't have any black friends. And when I went to Harlem, I innocently went just simply because I didn't recognize the difference between a white Christian and a black Christian, a red Christian or a yellow Christian. To me, there were Christians. They were non-Christians or they were Christians. They were liberals, they were conservatives, but the issue of the skin color never crossed my mind. And when I met with Ezra Nehemiah Williams on that first trip to Harlem in March, he was very, very standoffish. You could tell that he was guarding himself, guarding himself from something that I didn't know what it was, and it had to do with race. So after ministering in in Harlem during that March spring break, we sent hundreds of referrals to the church. He was so impressed with what we did on the street as a bunch of white kids that he sent two of his leaders, his staff people, to Christ Center clear clear across the country. You can't get any further from Oregon than New York in the United States. And he sent the two leaders and staff members out to see who in the world is this John Bowers and what in the world is he doing taking white kids to Harlem. We fell in love immediately as they came and stayed in our houses, our homes, and ate with us and fellowshiped with us. And they were amazed how much love they experienced there in Christ Center where they were the only blacks in the whole community. They went back and they told Nehemiah Ezra Williams that it's for real. This is a God thing. And I don't. they said, we don't think we should pass on it. We think that you need to meet Pastor John. And the elders met there in Bethel Gospel Assembly there in New York, in Harlem, New York, in the center of Harlem, one of the largest African-American churches in all of Harlem, most influential church, because Ezra Nehemiah Williams was a mighty man of God. So he called me and he says, John, I want you to do me a favor if you would. And I said, sure. What's that, Ezra? He said, well, I want you to come to New York and I want you to be the keynote speaker to our conference because the elders had met and they said, let's throw our faith to the wind and bring in a white pastor to address our our conference. This will be the first time that any white pastor has ever addressed our mission conference. So he said, I'm, I believe that I'm going to honor my elders. They believe that you're the one that needs to come and address us. So I'd like for you to come. So I accepted the invitation, and my wife and I took off for New York. And as we arrived in New York and got settled, I was to meet Ezra in the church on the property in his office that Saturday afternoon. So when I went to the office and met him for the really the first time, he said, I have a serious issue here to talk about. And he says, I'm just going to shoot straight with you. I hope I don't offend you. But he said, I have to be honest with you and tell you that I gave up on whites years ago. Because all all that was happening was that they were taking advantage of me as a reconciliation leader in the black community. And it made the whites feel good by having me come and speak at their conferences, but nothing was getting done. So I gave up on the whites. And now after all these years, my board wants to have a white pastor come and be the keynote speaker at our mission conference. I says, well, then what's the issue? Well, he says, the issue is half now of my leaders, after they made the decision, came to me and said they don't want me after I've already invited you. I said, well, then that's not a problem. Let's just not do it. No, he says, the the other problem, the problem is the other half want you. 
And he says, I've got a serious issue on my hands. I said, well, Ezra, what do you want? He said, the truth is, I don't know what I want. Part of me doesn't want you here. Part of me thinks you're supposed to be here. I said, well, the part of you that thinks I'm supposed to be here, could that be God or is it the flesh, like the first part? Because I know that if there's a racial issue, it's a flesh issue. He looked at me and says, okay, let's make a deal. I'm going to put you on that stage. And if you do anything to foul it up, I'm taking you out. I'll, I'll take you out like a pitcher is taken off the mound, and I'll take over. I thought to myself, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity <laughs> to get crucified. We went that Sunday morning. And as we walked in the auditorium, you could tell, oh, they'd, they'd come to see the circus. There was blood in the air. You could smell it. There was, we dare you to come and stand on our pulpit. One of the guys that went to Ezra and said, I do not want him to come, was one of the leaders that took hundreds, if not thousands of people from Harlem to Shea Stadium for Promise Keepers. He was well known in the community, a businessman. Very well known. He says, Ezra, if you put that white guy on that platform, I'm walking out of this church and I'll find another church. I'm not going to tolerate this. I'm not going to stand for this. Little did I know that happened, but the end result was beautiful. So as I'm sitting there on the stage, I'm realizing this is not going to go anywhere. So I turned around and under the unction of God's spirit, I went to a choir member and I said, would you do me a favor? I said, would you go and get me a bucket of water, a pail of water, a bowl of water, basin, whatever you want to call it, and bring me two towels and leave it behind the stage because I think I might need it today. She smiled at me and went and did what she was requested of. And when she came back, she nodded at me and winked at me and, and the choir continued to sing. After the praise time, there were some announcements. 1,400 people were jammed in that building ready to see the white guy take the platform. When I was introduced, 1,400 people said nothing, did nothing. Quietness can be so deafening, it's terrible. And it was deafening. There wasn't an amen. And when there's no amen in, a, in the African-American church in Harlem, I'm telling you, it's bad. There was not one amen. There was not one hallelujah. There was not one praise the Lord. It was deafening silence. I looked at the lady and I nodded to her to bring the, ba the, the basin out. She brought it out, put it in front of me. I took two chairs and I put them down and I asked Ezra to come and sit in the chair. I took off his shoes. I rolled up his silk suit pants. I'm wired with a mic. was wired so that the whole audience could hear me. Because when he introduced me and no one responded, I had to respond. So I took the water and it was set front in front of me with a towel over my shoulder, took off my coat, white shirt and tie was left on and rolled up Ezra's pants, and took off his shoes and his socks, started washing his feet. And then the Lord said, stop and tell everybody to take their shoes off in this building. So I said, I would that I could wash all of your feet today all of your feet, but instead, would you take your shoes off as I wash the bishop's feet, and would you let the Spirit of God touch you the way I trust it will touch the bishop? All of a sudden, there was just a rumbling of shoes being taken off, up in the balcony, down on the floor, in the choir, rumbling, row, 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 shoes coming off, and I washed his feet, and as I finished washing his feet and drying his feet, you could just sense the power of God's Spirit was filling that auditorium with such a crescendo that it was going to explode and blow the windows out. As I finished washing his feet, drying his feet, put his socks and shoes on, tied his shoes, he, I get up to go sit down now and trusting maybe the service is over. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do. Service could have been over right then and been totally successful. Maybe the most successful sermon I'd ever preached. He says, Pastor John, I want you to come and sit down because I want to do something I've never done before. Not only have I never washed anyone's feet, I've never washed a white man's feet. I sat down, he took my shoes off, he took my socks off, rolled my pants up, washed my feet, was praising God as I praised the Lord, washing his feet. 
and then you could you could hear it the the murmuring of of crying the the murmuring of the hallelujahs the praises of the lord oh glory it all started building it started building like an orchestra that's tuning before the the first note to be played at the concert it was a fine tuned orchestra that was coming together to explode and as soon as he finished washing my feet he stood up he went to the microphone and he says now Bethel Gospel Assembly, would you welcome our guest speaker today, Pastor John Bowers. The place erupted. The guy that led the Promise Keepers had stopped at the door when I said, I'm going to wash the bishop's feet. He stopped right at the door, turned around, watched the whole thing in amazement. Watch Bishop wash my feet in amazement. And to this day, He's still a part of that church. To this day, when I go there, we greet each other. We hug each other. To this day, God's glory reigns in that place, and they've never forgotten. They've never forgotten what the power of God did in the washing of Ezra and Nehemiah's feet. You've been listening to the I Heard It on the 806 podcast with John Bowers. Make sure you don't miss an episode by subscribing wherever you listen. To learn more about John Bowers, this podcast, and to find out how you can get a copy of his new book, I Heard It on the 806, go to IHeardItOnThe806.com. This has been an Avenue 153 production.